Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very glad to have with us Shan Wang Zhang. Zhang got his bachelor's degree from UC Berkeley, where he worked in the Maimoni Group and was part of the team that completed the total synthesis of Berkeley Lone. Currently, he's pursuing his PhD at Scripps in the group of Professor Dale Boger, where he's completed the total synthesis of some very challenging targets. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Zhang. Thank you very much for joining us today to talk about your work. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction and for the invitation to present on this platform. My name is Zhang, and I am a fifth-year graduate student in the Boger Lab at Scripps Research Institute. It is my pleasure today to present my PhD research on the total synthesis of Strempel lyopene. Strempel lyopene was first isolated from the roots of the Cuban plant Strempeliopsis strempelioides. This natural product is the parent base of the schizocygine alkaloids, members of which were isolated later in 2002 and 2014 from the stems and roots of schizozygia caffeoids. They include schizogamine, schizogaline, schizozygine, as well as its two congeners. In the recent decade, strempeliabine has been completed by the groups of Padua, Chin, and Anderson, and was first completed by Hajisek in 1986, where they subjected an indolenine substrate to catalytic copper sulfate pentahydrate and a zinc batch they labeled as zinc B in boiling acetic acid. This affected a skeletal rearrangement into the desired schizozygine scaffold in 42% yield. This compound was then taken on to strempeliapine via an ozonolysis reaction with an oxidative workup using hydrogen peroxide, which resulted in the formation of strempeliapine in 49% yield. Interestingly, the group noted that the zinc batch, which they labeled as zinc B, was solely effective in bringing about this rearrangement. Specifically, in their model studies using different zinc sources, the authors observed that different zinc batches played an important role in the observed reactivity. The use of a zinc batch they labeled as zinc A, the undesired amine reduction to the amine was observed in 44% yield with only 3% for the desired rearranged product. However, the use of a zinc batch they labeled as zinc B, a selective formation for the skeletal rearrangement was observed in 36% yield with only 7% of the undesired imine reduction. The authors noted that no differences were found in the two zincs, except that the particle size of zinc A was up to 5 to 7 micrometer, and zinc B was up to 17 micrometer. The mechanism of this rearrangement, first reported and proposed by layman and coworkers, occurred first by a grop type fragmentation of this indolenine in acetic acid to form an aminium species that then alkylated on the C2 position of the indole to generate this azobenzophobine intermediate and was reduced selectively in the equilibrium mixture at this position by zinc to give the desired schizozygine scaffold. Later in 1992, the Saxon group attempted the zinc-mediated rearrangement on their similar indolenine substrate, where now the olefin is replaced by an ethyl ester. Using the zinc sources they had on hand, Saxton and coworkers were unable to affect the desired skeletal rearrangement, instead only observed the undesired imine reduction as well as side products related to it. Our initial goal for this project which guided our synthesis was to solve the mystery behind the capricious reactivity of zinc for the skeletal rearrangement of a Cividosperma skeleton to schizozygin skeleton. Towards the goal of unraveling the zinc-mediated reductive rearrangement for the total synthesis of strempeliabine, we set out to synthesize the rearrangement precursor via our own intermediate. This densely functionalized pentacycle served as the common intermediate for the divergent syntheses of six different classes of indoalkaloids from the Boga lab. The also apridine, phenylaridine, copsifolin D, copsinine, pseudocopsinine, and minovincinine. 
these synthesis were enabled by the late stage formation of strategic bonds highlighted in red for each of these natural products which are also unique to their natural product skeleton. The successful synthesis of strempoliapine would complement our previous divergent synthesis nicely to culminate for the divergent synthesis of seven different classes of endoalkaloids from a common intermediate. The synthesis began with tryptamine, which after seven steps in 27% yield, generated this 134-oxidiazole Upon heating this compound in 1,2-dichlorobenzene at 180 degrees for 36 hours, the desired cycloaddition cascade occurred to give the corresponding cycloadduct in 71% yield on a gram scale as a single diastereomer. The mechanism of this transformation begins with a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition between this olefin and the oxidiazole to give the corresponding aza bicycle which subsequently eliminates dinitrogen to give a stabilized 1,3 dipole that can then engage the indole with an endo approach to affect a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition to give the desired cycloadduct as a single diastereomer. This cycloadduct was further elaborated over three steps. First, selective reduction with sodium cyanoborohydride in acetic acid followed by a debenzylation with rainy nickel and a reprotection with CBZ chloride to give the desired carbamate in 54% yield over three steps. This racemic compound was then chirally resolved by HPLC using chirocell OD column to give 45% of the desired minus in enteromer as strong. The tertiary alcohol was then eliminated by a two-step sequence where it was first converted to the corresponding methyl xanthate using sodium hydride, followed by a sequential quenching of the resulting alkoxide with carbon disulfide, then methyl iodide. The heating of this methyl xanthate affected the desired jugaev elimination in toluene at 150 degrees to give the tetrasubstitute olefin in 50% yield over two steps. Our initial studies towards the rearrangement was done with racemic compounds. The amide was first reduced selectively with boring, followed by a workout with one normal HCl to cleave TBS ether to give the primary alcohol in 80% yield. This was then oxidized to the aldehyde, then a vitic olefination to give the desired allo product in 79% yield over two steps. The methyl ester of this compound was hydrolyzed with Triton B in a mixture of methanol and water at 80 degrees for 16 hours, which both hydrolyzed the ester to the acid as well as cleaves off the CBZ group. The carboxylic acid was taken on crude and was subsequently heated in toluene at 90 degrees for 16 hours to give the desired indolenin substrate in 73% yield over two steps. Unfortunately, when we attempted Hajizek's reported procedure in our hands, only the undesired 1-2 reduction of imine was observed. This reactivity of the zinc corresponds with Saxton and co-workers' results. Our subsequent attempts to affect this rearrangement involved examining different forms of zinc, such as zinc dust, zinc powder, zinc granules, zinc churnings, as well as aged zinc sources and its common byproducts, such as zinc oxide and zinc carbonate. However, in all these studies, we were unable to observe the desired rearrangement and only saw this undesired 1-2 reduction of imine. Hypothesizing that there might be trace metal contaminant in the reported zinc batch, we examined metals such as manganese, nickel, palladium, platinum, and chromium on the indoline substrate, and in all these cases, the other metals were unable to affect the desired skeletal rearrangement. After extensive screens that spanned two years of my PhD, we decided to take a step back and re-examine the reaction mechanism. And in doing so, we innovated a alternative Ompolon strategy that converts this aminium species via a single electron transfer to generate the corresponding alpha amino radical. This radical should be nucleophilic in nature and can then engage the less electron-rich 
C2 position of the indole compared to C3 to generate a more stabilized benzylic radical that upon quenching with an H dot source can then give us the same rearranged scaffold. And our strategy to access this alpha mu radical would be via this single electron reduction of the corresponding N-O-acetyl, which should be a substrate that is more amenable for handling compared to the iminium. Towards the synthesis of N-O-acetyl, we subjected this primary alcohol to potassium hydroxide in methanol at 90 degrees for 16 hours, which gave a modest 40% yield for the desired endolenine. Interestingly, attempt to generate the desired N-O-acetyl by grop type fragmentation using BF3 gave us a tri-substituted iminium species where the pendant primary alcohol does not cyclize to form the N-O-acetyl. This iminium is surprisingly stable and we were able to characterize it by NMR studies. Unfortunately, various attempts to form the desired C-C bond of the C2 of indole to the desired carbon was unsuccessful using single electron reducing conditions. Instead, we were only able to observe either a direct 1-2 reduction of the iminium or a C3 cyclization onto the indole instead. We then wondered whether putting an electron withdrawing group on the indole can activate the C2 position by making it more electrophilic and as well more susceptible for a nucleophilic radical attack. Towards that goal, we attempted various acylating conditions on the indole, but were unsuccessful in our endeavors due to the aminium simply reverting back to the starting indolenine followed by subsequent acylation of the imine. We then hypothesized that the presence of abide at that position should destabilize the aminium such that it is more prone to nucleophilic capture by the primary alcohol to form the N-O-acetyl, which would then make the indole protection easier in preventing reversion back to the indolenine. With these lessons in mind, we were able to synthesize our desired N-O-acetyl substrate. Specifically, using this enantio-enriched intermediate, we first subjected it to potassium hydroxide in a solution of THF, methanol, and water at 70 degrees for 16 hours, which gave us the desired carboxylic acid, as well as simultaneous cleavage of both the carbamate and the TBS ether. This intermediate was used crude and was heated in toluene at 108 degrees, which affected a decarboxylation to give the corresponding indolenine, and in the same pot underwent a grop type fragmentation to give this transient acylaminium species that was then successfully captured by the appendant primary alcohol to give the desired N-L-acetyl in 95% over two steps. This indole was surprisingly difficult to isolate and only by using a unique reagent system developed by the Sarpon group of this CBZ imidazole in the presence of DBU gave us the desired carbamate in 73% yield. Gratifyingly, subjecting this N-O-acetyl to submarium iodide in presence of BF3 ethere gave us the desired the aromative and transannular cyclization product on the C2 of indole. This was accompanied by minor amounts of C3 cyclization and 1-2 reduction of the N-O-acetyl. Attempts to optimize this reaction was unfruitful. By running this reaction at zero degrees, we were unable to observe any product formation. And by changing the solvent to THF, benzene, and THF in a mixture of t butanol all three at room temperature only gave trace amounts for the desired cyclization products, where most of the mass remained as starting material. Without the use of BF3, both in THF and in CO nitrile, no reaction occurred. And finally, when bronzedet acid was used, such as acetic acid, acetic acid with HMPA, or TFA in THF, all resulted in either no reaction or decomposition of the N-O-acetyl. The reaction outcome can be rationalized mechanistically as follows. First, BF3 coordinates to oxygen for fragmentation of N-O-acetyl into the azoaminium, which is subsequently reduced by samarium-2 to generate the corresponding alpha amino radical that then engages 
on the C2 position of indole to give a more stabilized benzylic radical. This can either be quenched via an H dot source, or perhaps more likely, further reduced by another equivalent of samarium 2 to generate the benzylic anion that is then quenched by a proton source and tied to the methine to give the more kinetically favorable cis ring fusion product in 63% yield. From here, strempoliapine can be accessed in three steps. The CBZ group was removed using palladium on carbon under an atmosphere of hydrogen in 98% yield. The AMI was then reduced using lithium aluminum hydride in 85%. Finally, the lactamization occurred in late oxidation condition to give strempoliapine in 48% yield. With our results in hand, it can be speculated that in the original condition, it is plausible that the active reductant could be an in-situ generated zinc copper couple. This is known to be able to induce a radical formation from reduction of emines. As such, a possible alternative to this reductive rearrangement mechanism could involve a single electron reduction by a zinc copper couple where instead of the ace of benz fulvine formation a reduction by zinc copper couple of the zeminium can then generate an alpha amino radical followed by cyclization onto c2 of indole to give the same product in conclusion we successfully affected a rapid construction of the speedospermic skeleton via a 4 plus 2, 3 plus 2 cyclovision cascade and the elaboration of its cycloadduct onto strempoliapine. This complements Bogolev's previous diversion syntheses of indole alkaloids to culminate for the total syntheses of seven different classes of indole alkaloids from a common intermediate. Key to the completion of the total synthesis of strempoliapine was the successful rearrangement of aspidosperma to the schizoscagging skeleton, utilizing grob type fragmentation, followed by a dearomative radical cyclization that is regioselective for the C2 position of the indole for the formation of a quaternary center. Finally, I would like to thank Dr. Shukla for his extensive preliminary studies on the zinc mediated reductive rearrangement. I am also grateful for Professor Boger's constructive advice and encouragement over the years on this project. I also want to thank the members of the Boger Lab for supporting my graduate school endeavors thus far. Lastly, I would like to thank Scripps Research and the NIH for their financial support. This concludes my talk, and thank you again, Matt, for this opportunity to present on your platform. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Zhang for joining us to share your work. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.